Shalom Bahasham Yahwaha Kudesh Israel. This is Tribal Minister Prince Charlandin Ben Ami Motizoyan Ben Yasha Allah Senior, the mighty Hebrew. I give all praise and honor to Yahwah, the supreme, intelligent, powerful one of our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, those striving for righteousness' sake all over the planet Earth. I say unto the family, Shalom Aleichem. It's definitely an honor and a privilege for Yisrael to be here. So let's get this joint popping, shall we? You know, we got to get this joint popping. Let me turn that up just a little bit. Boom. Waiting for some people to come on. Get this party stomping. Yo, I think y'all might want to tag in F-O-P-E. Somebody tag in um, Kwanaf Yehovah F-O-P-E Prince. Tracy Moore, Hebrew Israelite Sovereign Nationals all over the planet Earth. So, y'all know this past Shabbat, before I did my presentation, I had a dialogue in the back chat with some dude named Jose Vera, right? So, as y'all know, I move very respectfully. But then he start getting real crazy with his mouth. You know what I'm saying? To the point that I had a body in the back page. So he called us up doing the video, calling me out, talking about I'm short, even though I'm not short. I don't know where he get that from. He mixing people up. He don't know what he's dealing with. So in this video, he talking about we the dirty Canaanites and we this and this why we be a hundred down. And so-called, you know, the so-called Bible don't say that it's anything wrong with mixing with the white Japhetic tribes or the Edomites or whatever he claimed to be the so-called white man. I don't know. But what I do know is that I'm a body him right here and right now. So, Jose Vera, one of your, you know, sources... To prove that Native Americans or so-called Hispanics or Israelites is by this man right here. Huh? Ezekiel. Ezekiel um, Gamaliel. Now, this dude right here is who you following, right? Because you always try to bring up this man, I notice in your argument. But family, today we're going to examine who this man is and who that movement that he's using to justify them being Israelites in Peru. Because in the debate that I was debating him in the back chat where I smashed him at, he used him, he used um, the Yemite Jews, he used the Orthodox Jews, and he used Mormonism, which I already destroyed, to justify, in the 12 tribe chart from the one West camps, to justify that they're Israelites and the so-called Negroes are really Hamites that are, are Hermetic Canaanites. And this is how the so-called Negro strain got into Israel during the Babylonian captivity because they're trying to say that the Southern Kingdom migrated into Africa and got the Negro strain. And that's why most of the tribes look like they so-called white Indian, so-called gypsy looking. So let's destroy this whole argument right now. Fuck the bullshit. Let's deal with real scholarship right now. So here's this man Ezekiel. And we not concerned about it being on Wikipedia or any of that because one thing that I've noticed about this article here, it gives you the sources from which everything came. So this boy Ezekiel that supposedly found this, where he's trying to use him, um, Ayash, all of them, they trying to use this as a platform to prove the Israelite presence in Peru. But let me show y'all what they really mean. I'm going to prove what the so-called ancient watchmen are teaching is not the same thing as the people that created this 
movement in Peru are saying. They are saying two different things. So y'all need to stop fucking lying. Stop lying. Now, let's get it. Ezekiel Gamalnel, April 10th, 1918 to June 21st, 2000, is also known as Brother Ezekiel, was a Peruvian politician and prophet of a religious movement he founded. He was the founder of a vandalistical association of the Israelite mission of the new universal covenant and they um, theocratic party known as the agricultural people's front of Peru P R E P A P. All right. Now watch y'all. Now we are going to find out what this man really means by saying Israelite. Do he, is he saying that they the direct descendants of the Israelites? Is that what this man is saying? Let's find out. Let's find out if, if, if this is what this man is really saying. So he was born, they say, in 1918 in this, um, in H-U-A, R-H-U-A. I'm not going to chop up nothing. Okay. And this was a village, um, it was a village of C-O-T-A-H-U-A-S-I near Arequipa, A-R-E-Q-U-I-P-A, into a poor family. He had many jobs as a shoemaker, railroad, railroad worker, and a soldier and a carpenter, okay, in the 1950s, while in his 40s, Ezekiel experienced many issues with his life and converted from Roman Catholicism to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, while experience, experiencing a series of illnesses, he reported that he visited a third heaven and addressed himself as a prophet. Stop. So the report says that he visited a third heaven and addressed himself as a prophet, writing the Ten Commandments on a bat or on a blackboard, saying he was tasked with delivering the commandments. For a second time. After the incident, he was removed from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, subsequently beginning to evangelize ritual, um, excuse me, rural Peruvians in 1956. So stop. So now this guy right here, right? He he was originally a Roman Catholic. And then in turn, he converted to seven day of uh, um, the seven day Adventist. And in the process, he started to claim that he went to this third heaven, start writing the Ten Commandments, calling himself a prophet. But he still evangelized it as a seven day Adventist amongst these Peruvian rural areas in 1956. OK. Ancient watchmen lie and say that that his so-called Israelite movement was created in 1955. No, it was not. Stop lying. He actually started to break off more from the Seventh Day of Venice around 1956. So then he created the Evangelistic Association of the Israelite Mission of the New Universal Covenant. Now, this is actually a seven-day Adventist off-branch movement. It was created by Ezekiel in 1968. Say, what you thought that you was going to, uh, there it is right there, y'all. Hold on so y'all can see it. See? It was created in 1968. 
What you thought we wasn't going to look this stuff up? That you can sit up there and continue to lie? And this is the man like right here? He don't even look like a real Peruvian, man. He don't even look like an Incan, man. Look at this boy, man. This boy is a Euro Gentile RH monkey DNA slash R Haplo group Spaniard conquistador. Who you think you talking to, man? Talking about the so-called Negroes or dirty Canaanites. But we proving that the people that you're trying to outline to show that you Israelites, they themselves didn't even acknowledge that they are Israelites themselves. They're going to give you a reason as to why they came up with this, that he came up with this. Watch, watch, y'all. I keep telling y'all that Hispanics, they not Israel, man. I keep telling y'all this. The so-called natives, they're not Israel, man. Now you got you got Israelites in the midst of them people, but the bulk of them are not us. Watch. Peep this. It says it was created in 1968, and the religion was officially recognized in Peru in 1969. Listen, the religion is a mix of seven-day Adventism, Judaism, Inca mysticism. And Mayoism. Come on, man. And Mayoism. Y'all know what Mayo Mayoism, right? That's all that communism shit. Right? Watch. The founding of the church happened when many rural Peruvians faced a decline in social economic standards in the 1970s. As the eternal conflict and Peru intensified followers of the flock, followers flock to the Evangelist Association of the Israelite Mission of the New Universal Covenant. And it's funny that it sounds like the universal practical knowledge, because you know that UBK came around in 1969 too. But the difference with UBK is that the original UBK founders that found UBK they all originated from either the old Tanakh school that was created by Rabbi Bivens, which in turn Rabbi Bivens learned by the way of the commandment keepers. So, but this guy, he didn't learn from no Israelites, nothing. He was just a regular Peruvian Catholic that felt some type of way about Catholicism, went into seven day Adventism and then he started mixing his own goulash up and created this. Now listen to what he say. Watch, y'all. Since you want to come at me and talk shit, I'm going to break your old fucking foundation down. Your foundation is not built on Israelite leaders. I asked you in the dialogue we had Saturday, show me any prominent real Hispanic or so-called native Israelite leader that impacted Israel on a level like a Ben Ami, Prince Asiel, a Yahweh Ben Yahweh, something like that. Show us the power and strength of your leaders so we can respect y'all as a real Israelite. No, y'all nothing but an off-branch splinter renegade one West camp. That's it. Watch this. Since I don't know how to pronounce his, his, his last part of his name, I'm going to pronounce his first name, Ezekiel. Preach that he was chosen by God. Listen, Ezekiel preached that he was chosen by God to create a new Israel in the Amazon rainforest as a punishment of the Israeli people for losing their faith. Stop. I just bodied you. Your prophet that you keep trying to bring up to us who don't even have no teachings or dealings with so-called ancient watchmen. Y'all making all this shit up. Y'all should have studied this doctrine before you brought his name to our attention, which I already know about it. My homie Ricardo in, uh, in South America is freaking uh, 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 um, a member of this dude's church. 
And he say he never even heard of no ancient watchmen. He don't know nothing about what they talking about. They do not teach that so-called black people are not Israelites. They don't even acknowledge that they're Israelites. They don't even acknowledge that they're Israelites. This dude teaches that God told him to create a new Israel because the punishment of the original Israel for losing their faith supposed to be the Israeli people, the so-called hybrid devils. So this supposed to be a prophet of God. Are you crazy? This man believed that the so-called Jews, the so-called Yids over there, the Khazars, that they were the real Israel and that God gave him a command to create a new Israel in the Amazonian rainforest to overthrow so-called real Israel, which is the freaking Israeli people. Are you fucking crazy? You can't fuck with me. Talking about I'm short. Nigga, I'm not short. I'm almost 5'11". Come on, man. You don't want no real smoke for real talking shit on social media. A lot of y'all, we can't touch y'all with these paws. So I'm going to destroy your whole foundation. I'm bringing up Prophet Arnold, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, Rabbi Matthews, Rabbi Washington, Rabbi, Ra uh, 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 Rabbi Lent, freaking uh, um, Prophet Cherry, Prophet Smith. Prophet Crowley, Israel Hill, the late Ben Ami, Prince uh, Asiel, Prince Shalia, Prince Keskiahu, on and on and on. Bay Hetzabot, Bay Neadat, Bay Sedate, Kephraim, the kingdom of. You can't fuck with us, man. We got communities in Demona. That's founded. We're actually saying that we the Israel Israelites. You bringing up people that believe. Listen, y'all. I'm not lying. Let's read it again. He said that he was preaching that he was chosen by God to create a new Israel in the Amazon rainforest as a punishment of the Israeli people in Israel for losing their faith. Now, don't we supposed to test the waters of a prophet by the way of Deuteronomy chapter 13? And on top, Deuteronomy chapter 4 say, don't add nor take away. Where have the Israeli people ever been the chosen people? So your leader believes that they're not even real Israel, but the people over in Israel is real Israel. Checkmate. I didn't cut you, nigga. I cut your fucking limb off. I cut your legs off. You can't stand. Stop bringing this false prophet to us. He was a false prophet, man. Let's continue on. Let's get it. Watch this. Followers of the movement regarded Ezekiel as a prophet and the reincarnation of the Holy Spirit. Funny how these same motherfuckers always talked about the so-called comforter Tezadakia. May he rest in peace or rest in completeness, right, from the Israelite school of God and Jesus Christ, which in fact is some of the original UBK members for the fact that Chief High Priest Arya, Chief High Priest Kazak, all them, they still over there. Didn't they believe that uh, uh, Tezadakia was the comforter? Don't y'all need, don't the New Testament say, even though I'm not a New Testament follower, I'm Torah only, but don't the New Testament say that the comforter is the spirit of truth. He believed that, listen, y'all, he believed that he was the reincarnation of the Holy Spirit. So ancient watchmen, so-called ancient watchmen, you telling me that this dude right here is the reincarnation of the Holy Spirit? Is that what you telling us? Yeah, yeah, you, you thought we weren't going to see these things, huh? Yeah, let's dig it. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. He gradually 
reduced the importance of Jesus and his movement. Ho, oh, ain't ancient watchmen, aren't y'all messianic? Don't y'all believe in Yahweh Shai, Yeshua, whatever pronunciation y'all want to say, even though I don't, you know what I mean? But I'm putting you the fuck out there. This man reduced the importance of Jesus, Yahweh Shai, and his movement. Ooh, ooh. But y'all claim, y'all talk about Yahweh, by, uh, uh, um, you know, y'all know I don't want to say that. And then y'all say Yahweh shot. But this man right here said, he gradually reduced the importance of Jesus and his movement. Right? 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 Liar. Liar. The Guardian described him as a self-styled spiritual leader who calls himself the Christ in the West. Don't you notice all these cultic, charismatic leaders, they always want to make themselves as Christ and to prove that he believed he was Christ. Yeah, you don't want to deal with me, Jose Vera. Why mostly all the leaders over there and all the men over there always have images of themselves looking like the image of Caesar Bolger? Go type these people up. Yeah, you always like to pull them pictures out, Jose Vera. Why is it that the men in this, this specific organization, all the men look like the Caesar Bolger, uh, uh, Jesus Christos? Yeah, this man believed that he was Jesus Christ, man. This man right here believed that he was Jesus Christ. Look at him. He don't even look like an Incan. He look like a straight Spaniard conquistador. That's who you want us to follow, Jose Vero? Huh? This who you want us to follow, man? This guy right here? The one you keep bragging about? You thought we wasn't going to get this information about this joker? The bull believed that he was Jesus Christ, man. Reincarnated. He believed he was the Holy Spirit, all that shit. Watch. Because what y'all see is an evolution of his growth in his goulash. That's what you're seeing. That's exactly what y'all seeing. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. He called himself the Christ of the West. Ezekiel will often state that the apocalypse was approaching and will preach that he delayed, that he delayed such events. Now this... <laughs> oh my yeah, This is basic. All you had to do is look it up. You, you, you think you can... This is what... This is who you want us to follow? Are you freaking serious? So he's saying that he was stopping certain events from taking place for the apocalypse to come. Are you kidding me? Listen, listen to what he said. Since y'all want to follow after devils like this, you want to follow devils after this. Listen. These people have nothing to do with the so-called ancient watchmen. What they did, they didn't, they was, they were, what was happening, they was infants in their research and very immature and impatient. And they had to prove some way, somehow that they had credibility because they didn't, because they seen all these black Canaanites, as they call us, with all these different Israelite camps, communities, they're all over the world, they live in Israel, you got the northern kingdom on the rise, all throughout Africa, they seeing all this shit, so they like, damn, we gotta come up with something to make ourselves look good, as if we put some form of foundation to the Hebrew Israelite sovereign nation, and they ain't did shit. This has nothing to do with Israel right here. They just took the name Israelite and put up. These are Christians, man. These are Christians with Israelite overtones. That's it.
That's it, man. This is just another cult, man. And look, you can clearly see that this man is not our people, man. Like, check it the fuck out, man. Can I get the fuck out? You thought we weren't going to find this stuff out? Watch, y'all. Watch this. Tell me, I'm sure he'll knock me the fuck out. Nigga, I'm not sure. And you, only thing that's going to get knocked out is your block on the fucking, your head dealing with me. Right now, I'm academically destroying you right now. That's a Spaniard, right, Yahuda? Right, right. That's a Spaniard. Watch. I'm going to read that from the top. Ezekiel preached that he was chosen by God to create a new Israel in the Amazon rainforest as a punishment of the Israeli people, meaning in the state of Israel, for losing their faith, meaning their faith in Judaism. Strike one. He got the wrong people. He talking about the so-called Israelis are God's chosen people. This guy's a false prophet. Followers of the movement regarding, watch, watch y'all, Ezekiel as a prophet and the reincarnation of the Holy Spirit. Strike two. Strike two, even though I'm Torah only, I do know the doctrine of Messianics. And most Messianics do not believe, you know, that the Holy Spirit is an incarnation or a reincarnation of a man figure. But they acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Like, come on, these guys is fucking liars. He gradually reduced the importance of Jesus in his movement. So you saying one West camps, you follow that? Fuck no. Real messianics is not going to reduce the importance of Yahweh or Yeshua, bar Yahweh Suf or Yosef. They not going to do that. The Guardian. The Guardian is a respected magazine newspaper described him as a substyle spiritual leader who called to himself the Christ of the West. Come on, keep putting you in this Christ mentality. Watch, watch this, watch this. Ezekiel will often state that the apocalypse was approaching and will preach that he delayed such events. Come on, but y'all want to sit up here and laugh at one West because they said Yahweh Shai was going to return in 2000. But look at this motherfucker right here. Look at this guy. This guy is crazy, right? His followers were required to wear robes molded from the Old Testament, though Ezekiel never wore them, saying that he would only do so when the apocalypse occurred. Throughout this time, he had several wives and was known to be sexually active, according to the Daily Telegraph, right? He was the party's candidate president for Peru two times for a 1995 election and 2000 election, though he was never elected for any political office. Death and legacy. He died at this M-I-R-A, I think it says F-L-O-R-E-S, Lima, of kidney failure and his followers held a three-day funeral waiting for his resurrection beside his body. Beside his body uh, 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 um, decorated with gold jewelry. Stop. So his followers was waiting for him to resurrect. Come on, what was he teaching these people for them to be waiting on his resurrection. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet, right? But this is who you are. His, as his followers waited for his resurrection and his body began to decompose. His body, Ezekiel's body was placed in a glass coffin. After not resurrected, many followers became disillusioned with him. Ezekiel's son, Jonas, was chosen as his successor, and his party eventually grew within the Peruvian Congress following the 2020 uh, 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 Peruvian 
election. So that's 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 go back a little bit more. And look and, and, and I want to show y'all. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see some images right real fast. Let, look, these guys look like Jesus. Or not Yahweh shot, but Caesar Bolger. Look, the Israelite coat of Peru. But they don't really look, they don't really acknowledge themselves as Israelites. Look, y'all. Look so y'all can see. This is who this, that's how he looked when he got real old. This ain't our people. Look at these guys. Come on, man. These guys is regular Christians, man. Come on. Come on. Let's get it. This is who he keep bragging about. These were the pictures of these people that they've been showing us. Look. These guys, these guys do not believe that they're really Israelites, man. Okay? Look. Look, watch this. Let's go deep. Let's get deep. I'm going to show y'all. I got two more things to show y'all on this portion. Look. Huh? Huh? Look, the Israelites of the new universal pact. This is their name now. Or a South American religious sect. Mostly concentrated in Peru. The evangelistic Christian sect was founded in the joining province of Peru in 1960 by Ezekiel, following a break with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which he and his followers been members. The end time sect, which proselytes Peru as the promised land and its founder as the Messiah had gained large followers among indigenous people of the Peruvian jungle. Like these people don't believe that they Israelites, man. Stop freaking lying, man. These guys, man, were just regular Christians, man. These guys were Christians. Let's go on to it. I'm going to different sources. There you go right here. That's freaking get it. Look. Look, y'all, let's get it. Since you want to sit up here and keep talking crazy, as if you know who you're dealing with, the Israelite Code of Peru, right? The Israelite Church of the Universal New Covenant started in Peru and is growing rapidly throughout South America. As you read throughout the doctrine of this bizarre cult, you will see similarities with other cults, such as the Mormons. Seven day Adventist Jehovah Witnesses and various others. This is one of the most bizarre cults in South America. And you remember, and you remember, Jose Vera, didn't you try to justify your proof that the so called natives and his and Hispanics were Israelites by saying that uh, uh, what you say, what's that you said? Mormonism has six million followers. They prove that we the Israelites. Then you try to bring up this cult, right? Then you try to bring up UPK talking about the 12 tribe chart and that we got more tribes than y'all. Y'all only got three. We got 10. Remember you said that. Let me rip you apart. Watch. Watch. The Israelite cult started in the jungles of Juni or Juni, Peru, as a break off of the Seventh day Adventist church when the founder Ezekiel Gomorrah received a revelation from God to restore the alliance with man. They are not Jewish descent, but Peruvian. Why? The Israelites believe that when the Catholic church abandoned the truth. Stop. So they saying that the Catholics originally had the truth and then they abandoned it. The Catholic church never had the truth. What are you talking about? This guy, this is the, look at him. He's a caveman. He's a fucking caveman. Come on, man. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? That's why I'm chopping your doctrine down. Because you've been disrespecting our people, man. That built this. Look at this clown. It's a fucking clown, man. Are you crazy? Look.
Watch this. I'm going to give it to you straight with no chaser. See, you want me to be kind. I'm not going to be kind and I'm going to call this dirty canine. That's your fucking leader right there. That's your Ezekiel from your so-called Israelites in Peru that don't even acknowledge that they Israelites. They don't even acknowledge that. They don't even acknowledge you. My homie Ricardo, that's over there. He said he don't even know who you are. They don't even teach what y'all teaching. So why are you lying? Watch. 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 These said Israelites believe that when the Catholic Church abandoned the truth, the true church has been dead and in darkness until 1955. When Ezekiel received his revelation, they believe that the church is only alive in their movement. These is Christians, man. These is Christians wearing on fucking costumes. Ezekiel claimed to be a part in saint. So he believed that he was a saint through his predecessors, Moses and Jesus, right? He declared that Peru was the chosen nation and the place where the new Jerusalem would descend to at the end of the world. So he believed that Peru is Israel. Now you see why so-called ancient watchmen ain't, come on, man, you want to bring up these people. So my question to you, ancient watchmen, is where's the real, real Israel at? I dare you to say Peru, nigga, so I can chop your goddamn skull off. Tell me it's Peru. But he believed that it is. Him, this guy, your father, the one that you believe you, you shouldn't have brought him up to us. I kept telling y'all, did I not, Moshe? Did I not say they going to bring up that corny cult over there in South America? I told you I was going to get you. What you thought you was going to make a video and slander me and thought I wasn't going to come back and destroy you? I'm not these dudes that you used to dealing with, man. I'm not no Facebook social media junkie, nigga. I will destroy you and body you. I prove they never believed that they were Israelites. These people don't believe that they're Israelites, man. They don't believe that. So why are you calling them Israelites and they themselves don't even believe that they're Israelites? They're just an apocalyptic seven-day Adventist movement, just like David Caress and the Waco, Texas. And all them over there, them right alls over there in California. All the movements, Jim Jones, the People's Church, had them drink that cyanide up there in South America. In the same fucking area, jo Jamestown, Jonestown, South America. All that ain't Peru, all that in South America. All your little apocalyptic cults coming from out of that area. What are you talking about, man? These guys is Christians. Look at him. Tell me that's an Israelite. Man, you better get the hell out of here, man, with that dumb crap. Ezekiel, man, look, come on, man. He says, according to their beliefs, the Incas were not pagans, but prophets of God. What are you talking about? We got freaking archaeological, paleontological facts that the Incans was sacrificing up there in South America at them pyramids, ripping hearts out. Come on, man. Don't, don't. Yo, man. You better stop playing. Ezekiel is referred to as the Messiah and boasts of the titles, my Lord, the man, the pastor of pastors, the son of man, the only begotten of God, Israel. Right? Listen, y'all. The new Inca. And the new Moses, Ezekiel claimed to be the reincarnation of Christ. And come, come on, man, will you come on? So, ancient watchmen, I'm Torah only, and I'm going to bomb you for the messianics. Ancient watchmen, so-called ancient watchmen, who's the most yach amongst messianics? Is it this guy right here, or is it Yahweh Shai? Could you messianics please stand up real messianic Hebrew Israelite Soviet nationals for y'all? Who is the most Shiach for messianics? Yeshua, Yahweh, however you want to pronounce it, Yeshaya, huh? Or this man right here, this cave dwelling man right here, huh? 
that the so-called ancient watchmen want to keep bringing up? Huh? Huh? Is that him right there? Please, real messianic stand up and let's see. If I'm Torah only and I know better than that. I know goddamn well no real messianic will condone that right there. Y'all false prophets and see how your own words. Oh, y'all thought we wasn't going to look this up. That's what you thought. I'm going to have two parts. This is part one right here. This is part one. This is part one because there's so much information I got on this. I'm a body y'all. I'm a body y'all and I'm going to show y'all how oh, y'all thought, you know, it was sweet. Watch. Watch this. Look y'all. Look at what this man said. That he believes that he's the reincarnation of Christ and is called the Christ of the West. Why Jesus is called the Christ of the East. So he's saying that he's the Christ of the West and that Jesus is the Christ of the East. And Ezekiel even claimed to be above Jesus by being the fleshly form of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, I'm telling you what, I'm going into your doctrine. I'm going into your doctrine. Since you want to sit up here and keep talking shit, huh? You want to keep talking like you tough? You want to keep calling this dirty ass Canaanites? Well, to me, they're saying like some fucking Canaanite shit here. Huh? huh? Since you want, according to the followers, there are four generations of judgment. The first generation was with Noah and the flood. The second generation was with Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. The third generation is uh, uh, is them or the so-called Israelites today, meaning their, their group. The generation will last 2,000 years, and after the years are ended, there will be seven years of punishment. In the 1990s, these Peruvians believed the end of the 2,000 years was coming to an end. These Peruvians, because they can say these Israelites in Spanish, but since they're not Israelites and they're not saying that, and they're saying they're not Israelites, I'm not going to call them Israelites. These Peruvians hope that Ezekiel will put on the famous red tonic and begin to preach. Ezekiel predicted that at the end of the third generation, he will put on the red tonic and preach for 1,260 days. At the end of these days, he will be crucified by the Catholic Church. These niggas is Christians, man. He going to be crucified by the Catholic Church. And these guys is cold weirdos, man. And... Why are they members, men, want to look like Jesus? And when I say Jesus, I'm talking about Caesar Bozier, the second son of Pope Alexander, the sixth of Rome. Come on, man. Look at them, man. But they us. Come on, man. Watch this. Watch this. The Antichrist. This is all Christian shit. I'm going into a doctrine. The Antichrist will rise to power soon after his death. Ezekiel's body will remain unburied for three days and then the Holy Spirit will come to carry him away. That's why they was waiting for him to resurrect. They put all them gold, gold jewelry on him and all that. And when his body started decaying, they put him in a fucking glass tomb light. Worshiping the dead. Watch this. The Peruvian's belief were shaken when Ezekiel died in the year 2000 from a heart attack. You false prophet. I thought the Roman Catholics was going to crucify you. Jose Vera, what's up with this false prophet that you keep bringing up? I thought he was going to be crucified by the Roman Catholics, but he had a heart attack in the year 2000. These Peruvians made some changes to their doctrine and appointed Ezekiel's son, Jonas, Right. To take his place. Ezekiel is buried in Lima today. And his grave is a special place of pilgrimage. Now they're going to visit the dead. That's against Torah. You're not allowed to visit the dead in the Torah. Come on, man. Oh, oh, but they supposed to be Torah observers. Are you crazy, man? Who you think you're dealing with? You cannot visit the dead bodies after they go in. The Come on, man. 
You will be unclean until the third and seventh day. You got to be cleaned again by the Levitical priest. Come on, man. Y'all corny, man. Y'all some corny ass dudes, man. Y'all do not know Torah, man. Look, look at this, yo. Look, today, the Peruvians pray to the dead Ezekiel. Come on, man. Come on, man. You don't want to fuck with me. You don't want to fuck with me, man. I'm telling you now. Leave my name out your mouth, dude. You want to bring this dude up as if it's giving you evidence that you Israel. Look, look at us. We doing this. This man followers are praying to him, man. Huh? Look, look, y'all. Look, y'all. Look, today, the Peruvians prayed to the dead Ezekiel to provide their needs. And they believe that his son Jonas is the omnipresence and forgives sins. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're finished. You finished. Anytime he bring, listen, y'all, anytime so-called ancient watchmen ever bring this group up again, these are the things you bring out to them. Huh? Since the time of Ezekiel's death and the succession of Jonas, it is believed that Jonas will fulfill the role of Ezekiel at the end of the third generation. After he is carried away by the spirit, Jesus Christ will supposedly descend from heaven with countless angels with chariots of fire to rescue the true Peruvians who will be all gather in a Pacific place. White clouds will descend from the chariots to determine the thoughts of the people. Only those who think of only God will be taken in the chariots to Canaan, the promised land, for a thousand years. Hmm. But I thought Peru would be the new permit. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. So, see, see. They have changed their doctrine. Originally, Peru supposed to have been the new promised land. But you remember they said they made minor changes. So now the new promised land is somewhere in the clouds called Canaan. Okay, man. Okay. 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 Now watch. Now watch, y'all. Watch. The life in Canaan will be different. There will be no commerce, no marriage, or procreation during a thousand years everyone will speak Arabic <laughs> oh my god oh my god this is who y'all want us to believe in Matt this is who y'all want us to believe in huh huh <laughs> you know, oh my god I'm sorry Forgive me, y'all. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. I'm, I'm not, yeah. Woo! This is one of the most bizarre cults I ever read in my life. <laughs> oh my God! Woo! Oh man, this is crazy. Everyone will be like angels and never age. They spend their time farming. And no one can enter the land farming. They go, okay. The wicked generation that cannot enter Canaan will be vampires. They will be vampires. The Peruvians, so-called Israelites that never made it, made the cut to enter Canaan are counseled to flee for the jungle dawn, the thousand years and build their own promised land to escape judgment. At the end of the thousand years, the chariots of fire return and take the Peruvians to other planets. They will take them to other planets. They, they, they niggas believe in a bunch of everything. <laughs> Look, bunch of taking them to different planets. The, the, yeah, I mean the Peruvian so-called Israelite cult based their beliefs on the Bible. But this special interpretation only be made known to the person by the Holy Spirit when they first believe. Now, this is like other strange beliefs with them. They believe that God is a Peruvian. 
They believe that God took on the form of various Incan kings over time and eventually became Ezekiel. The Ten Commandments of the Incans are hidden in Manchi Piku and have not yet been discovered. They say Peru is the holy ground. They say that Ezekiel is the vicar of the Holy Spirit and he's infallible. This shit is crazy. He sound like the Pope, right? The so-called Pope. They say that the world would be destroyed in the year 2000, right? Which never happened. With the exception to the Amazon jungle. Obvious, obviously, this, this did not happen. Because they claim it did happen, but you must see it spiritually. Ooh. Ezekiel would be the president of Peru. Of course, that didn't happen. These Peruvians claim it did happen, but you must see it spiritually. Ooh. Ezekiel would die and then raise from the dead three days later. Never happened. These Peruvians claim that it happened, but you must see it spiritually. Ooh. Ezekiel will re return to the earth again in 2,000 years to take his followers with him. And motel taxes, these Peruvians evangelized throughout Peru and South America by preaching in plazas dressed in sackcloth and always with a beard. Say this may seem to be a joke, but hundreds of thousands of people are being deceived into following this cult. It may not be surprising today, but even some evangelists are calling this cult a branch of Protestantism. This Israeli cult is advancing rapidly throughout South America. You got to hear this. South America by targeting uneducated and isolated people in the jungles and mountains. That's the problem with so-called ancient watchmen. They're uneducated. I've seen the Peruvians preaching in the plazas in small towns outside of Costco. And I know people who are part of the cult. So these people are a cult, man. These people are a cult. Come on, man. Come on, man. Look, and somebody saying how he tried to run for president. Like, they were saying he's fucking with young chicks. All kinds of shit. Like, come on, man. This is this is their whole job. They mission, they doctrine. I mean, everything with them. This is crazy, man. And y'all and y'all went for this. Y'all fell for this. Y'all thought this dude was something, but he wasn't. You thought, yeah, you know, I'll bring this boy up. You know what I mean? And and and, and they don't know. But watch this. Watch this. Oh, this is the last part on them. Look, y'all, check it out. So these are the motherfuckers they want us to believe in. Right? And I want y'all to see. Uh I can't even do it in English. Let me see if it's in English. <laughs> yeah, they break down that they Christians and all. Let me get the English version, y'all. Hold up. Because this is dumb right here, but I'm trying to get it in English. <laughs> Yeah, they, but they all Christians, though. And that's what I'm saying. They not telling y'all that this dude was a Maoist, all kinds of stuff. See, they don't tell you all this about these dudes, man. Um, Let me see if I can get a video in English real quick about them. Because everybody don't speak Spanish. So let's see if I can find any videos real fast. Um, on them real quick because all these stuff 
it's in like Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. Okay, I think I found the one. Okay, this might be it right here. Yeah, all right, so they're going to send me here. So it's here. So let's see if I can um, get it off of here. I'm trying to see. But it's, 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 it's crazy, man. And you got these missionaries. What they doing is they trying to, like, counter what these people are saying. That's what they saying. Um... I'm trying to see where it's at. I know it's some around here, but if not, then I'm going to go to the next portion where I was going to go. And then from there, um, um, come back with something in English. It's not really a lot of stuff on. Uh, um, they just saying translate this page. Uh, let's see. But if not, don't even worry about it. I'll just come back to it. But I thought it would be like a um some form of Facebook page that that deals with a friend of mine, he was able to translate the first one to me as it was being like I was listening and he was able to like translate it for me. But these people don't even believe that they Israelites, none of that. They don't believe in none of that stuff. They just believe that they just regular Peruvians that just got the truth. You know what I'm saying? So now, let's deal with some facts now, shall we? So, I'm going to show y'all two videos real quick and then I'm going to close it out. Because... This man tried to make it seem as though we not Israel. I keep saying that the northern kingdom ran in Africa. Now, I destroyed that whole Ezekiel thing. So let's find out real quick what we saying as Israelites have any historical facts. It's of history and interaction with the Abrahamic religions. Christianity and Islam, the African continent has an extensive history and interaction with the Abrahamic religions. Christianity and Islam are well documented within the continent, but seldom do we explore the history of Judaism in Africa. And with modern day movements within the African diaspora, this history is being advanced within the social framework of the public consciousness. That's good. What about the world? It's your boy, Home Team, and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Remember, if you want access to sources, courses, exclusive videos, or you just want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. It's no surprise that scholars are having to address the history of Judaism in Africa due to the rise of the black Hebrew Israelite community. The Hebrew Israelites have done a fantastic job at moving the discussion through grassroots efforts in urban communities. Their narrative has become so potent that it even influenced the minds of popular hip hop artists like Kendrick Lamar and Kodak Black. Stop. Now you got to hear what they saying like we influencing the whole world. The whole world. Like them Hispanic people, they're not influencing nobody. They was influenced by us. I told you ancient watchman Jose Vera is going to get you. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this. Word is only a color. It ain't fact no more. I'm an Israelite. My diamonds is real ice. And this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Hebrew Israelite influence in popular culture. My last video about the top 10 African ethnic groups taken in the Atlantic slave trade spurred up the debate about Hebrew Israelite claims concerning biblical prophecies and how black people in the diaspora may reflect this history. A lot of you guys have been messaging me to share my thoughts on the topic. I thought it would be an interesting topic to analyze, but more importantly, I wanted to go into the details of some of the major claims and compare it to what we know about West African history. So here it goes. 
First, we're going to discuss the general history of Judaism in Africa, and then we'll compare them to the Hebrew Israelite ideology and what some scholars have to say. I definitely can't cover everything in this video, so keep in mind that there will be a part two, so make sure to make comments. With any movement around the globe, it's important to have elements of truth in it, and that's how most of them acquire their following. The truth is, there is a history of Jews in Africa. According to most accounts, the earliest Jewish settlements were in North Africa, and it only makes sense for Judaism in Africa to begin in the North as a point of entry from the Levant region where it originated. Jews and Amazigh, or what we call today Berbers, ultimately interacted with each other, and some Berbers in North Africa actually converted to Judaism. In fact, according to accounts from the 19th century onward, Queen Kahina, an Amazigh queen who fought against the Arab invasion, was said to have converted to Judaism. Even though this is debated within the scholarly community, it still points to the presence and influence of Judaism in Africa. Pointing further south, in Ethiopia, the queen who destroyed the Aksumite Empire was believed by some to have been a Jewish convert. Her name was Queen Gudi. And again, despite the controversy, the knowledge of Judaism in Africa was not foreign or unknown. But the most unlikely place people are to expect the presence of Judaism tends to be West Africa, because it's so far away from the origin of Judaism. Admittedly, the most direct evidence for Jews in West Africa comes from the West African writers themselves in the Tariq al-Fatash. Oh. The Tariq al-Fatash is a West African chronicle written in Arabic in the second half of the 17th century. So let's start right there. We know at this time, Arabic was the language of diplomacy. Peer review didn't start in... um. Europe, it actually started in Timbuktu, West Africa. So recently, there's been a lot of Timbuktu manuscripts released to the people. So these are actual manuscripts, okay? And eyewitness accounts, Jose Vera, we talking about real eyewitness accounts. We not, we not playing games no more. I just bodied your leader briefly. Okay, well, it's not even your leader because them people don't know who y'all are and they don't even deal with y'all and they not even on that new. Okay, watch. And it provides an account of the Songhai and Mali empires. The Tariq al-Fatash describes a community called the Bani Israel that in 1402 existed in Tindurma, Mali, possessed 333 wells and had seven leaders. It even goes on to list the names of the leaders and even states that they had an army of around 1,500 men. Apparently, there was a sizable amount of Jews in the Songhai Empire, and according to Leo Africanus, the Askia, or king, really wasn't too pleased that they were there. The king is the clear enemy of the Jews. He will not allow any to live in the city. If he hears it said that a Berber merchant frequents them, or does business with them, he confiscates his goods. It's important to note that thousands of Jews and Moors during this same period were reportedly expelled from Spain and came to settle in North Africa. But nonetheless, Jews were in West Africa and Africans and Arabs recorded their presence. There are many more accounts of Jews in Western Africa, but let's discuss the strongest claim from the Hebrew Israelites that support their narrative. Like mentioned before, the Hebrew Israelites claim that Hebrew communities lived in Africa, and historically, that's true. But their strongest claim comes from Dr. Rudolf Winter in his book, From Babylon to Timbuktu. There, he proclaims a Hebrew Israelite state in West Africa called Kamnuria, or Kanuria. The Moorish writer, Leo, Africanus informs us of the past existence of a medieval Hebrew state called Kamnuria or Kanuria. In fact, Kamnuria did indeed exist, and to Dr. Winter's credit, there is very strong evidence that there were Jews living there. In Mauritania, according to oral tradition of Western Africa and Arab sources, the first inhabitants of Mauritania were the Bafour people. 
who apparently claimed Jewish origin. The Balfour were a pretty verbal people who reported they were black Africans with some Semite ancestry. Al Adrisi, the Muslim scholar and historian, writes, and I quote, the inhabitants of Amelia, following the saying of merchants, claim to be Jews. According to Al Adrisi, when the Islamic Berber Empire of the Amoravids were expanding, they began to oppress the Balfour Kamnuria population and they were left in a state of survival. Only a small group from Kamnuria remained scattered between the deserts and near the coast and living off dairy products or fish. They lead a hard and precarious life. They wander in this territory. Now, like mentioned before, all movements and religions must contain elements of truth to them. And this is by far the strongest and most reliable argument of the Hebrew Israelite community concerning Jews or Hebrews in West Africa. Now, given all of that, with further analysis of their claims, the scholarly and religious community have many objections. For the sake of time, let's all concede and agree with the position of the Hebrew Israelites that all the Hebrews yeah, that's our from community Israel, in Des Moines, Israel all the way to North and West Africa are all black Hebrews. Even if we concede to that point, there are still difficulties with assigning these people not only to the African diaspora, but African kingdoms. But we'll get into that later. It's important to note that the Hebrew Israelite ideology and belief is very diverse. So we're going to tackle the most popular one. The book From Babylon to Timbuktu and its author, Dr. Rudolf Windsor, is one of the most celebrated history books for most Hebrew Israelites. So we'll use his claims from this book and compare it to what we know historically about West African history. Dr. Rudolf Windsor is a Hebrew Israelite himself, and in his book, he claims that the kings of the Ghana Empire, also known as Wagadu, were black Hebrews. The black Hebrew kings of Ghana had two titles, Kayamaga and Ghana. It's a well-documented fact that the Solonika people founded the empire of Ghana, not black Hebrews. The Soninka weren't Jews at all. In fact, they had a legend about a giant snake that they made a pact with to sustain their land. According to Soninka oral tradition, the Soninka venerated a giant snake named Beta, and they made sacrifices to him. And I quote, every year the Beta would receive a maiden and a horse, and in exchange, the Beta would rain gold upon the land. This obviously has strong religious undercurrents concerning their traditional African belief system, which was the veneration of snakes. Nothing at all within Sonica society points to any Jewish, socio-political, or religious parentage. Hebrew Israelite scholarship has a tendency to bulk up the presence of Jews in West and Central Africa, so that the millions of people sought off the coast of Africa will align with their claim that all victims of the Atlantic slave trade are the true and authentic children. And as y'all know, we teach at the Mighty Hebrew University, the Mighty Hebrew Israelite Sovereign Nationalistic Research Team. We believe that all the slaves that came over, they were not Israel. All of them weren't. Now, all the slaves that came to the United States, they're Israel. But all the slaves that came to the Western Hemisphere, in the islands, different things like that. They all weren't Israel. Yes, there were a lot that were. Some they weren't. This is why they had different breaking posts. But when it came to the so-called Negro of the United States, we came straight by the way of West Africa. So he's definitely right. And also he's right about when you start talking about the Nata and then the Sunot, that they were two different elements. You did have an Israelite presence but then you also had a hermetic presence that weren't our people. Let's continue on. ...of Israel. The argument actually crumbles with the numbers. The way they tend to boost these numbers is by claiming the originators of some African empires or kingdoms were black Hebrews, and they simply converted to Islam later on. 
like with the Empire of Ghana and the Songhai Empire. Many Hebrew Israelites claim the original West African Songhai dynasty, known as the Za or Dia dynasty, had a line of black Hebrew kings. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. His name is sometimes written Za al Ayaman. Because it's assumed that we can confirm historically the religion of the early Dia or Za dynasty of the Songhai, Dr. Windsor simply inserts the idea that it was a black Hebrew one. The Tariq el Sudan, which is another chronicle from West Africa written by an African, makes mention of the Za dynasty and its ruler, but does not at all mention that he was a Hebrew or a Jew for that matter. Thankfully, today, due to new information, we have some writing from ancient Songhai traditional scribes called the Kumba. This was the earliest Songhai writing form used to communicate largely religious matters. A Songhai historian named Dr. Hasimi Maga has preserved the text of his people and given us insight into the religion of ancient Songhai people. The following is a written Songhai communication between two priests. Peace be upon Ndebi. Men and women are greeting you, and the river, the forest, and the Genji. The cattle, the birds, and the animals are suffering because of the lack of rain. Peace be upon Ndebi. Men and women are greeting you. May the peace of the day and the night be upon you. We must organize the dance. We must sacrifice animal blood and offer it to the Genji to drink. When the Kumba receives such letters from other scribes, they explain or interpret the meaning of such letters. Such letters also can be ordered by the chief of the village, the king, or they can be initiated by the Kumba themselves for the benefit of the population. Now, based off this communication between two Songhai scribes or priests before the advent of Islam, it's clear that the god that they worship, which the Za dynasty kings seemingly validated, was not Yahweh of the black Hebrews, but Ndebi. Also, nothing in black Hebrew Israelite culture makes reference to offering animal blood to the Ganji, which the early Songhai dynasty believed were spirits in human form. We have to ask ourselves, why would black Hebrew kings of the Songhai allow the worship of Ndebi and the veneration of Ganji? These are very difficult questions to answer if we are to subscribe to this idea that the early Songhai kings were black Hebrews. The fact is this, the ancient Songhai dynasties very clearly weren't black Hebrews, acquiring any traditions from the Levant and worship of Yah, but they were West Africans practicing a traditional African belief. By claiming that Ghana and Songhai were originally Hebrews, you automatically boost up the numbers of Hebrews in Africa greatly, along with other independent Jewish communities we see historically. And thus, you can comfortably align yourself with the claim that all the millions of victims of the Atlantic slave trade are the true and authentic children of Israel. Attempting to disprove Hebrew-Israelite origin in African empires can be difficult as anyone can insert an Israelite presence with historical gaps. But one thing that seems a little peculiar is Dr. Rudolph's claim that the black Jews maintained their history, laws, and written records, and they did not absorb into the African tribes. Instead, the African tribes absorbed into them. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the autochthonous population. So according to Dr. Rudolph, the black Hebrew kings of Ghana and Songhai had the advantage over other Africans because they maintained their culture, written records, laws, and history. Also, these black Hebrews were not absorbed into the African culture, 
taking on any of the African cultural, religious, or societal ways, but that the Africans took on the ways of the black Hebrews. This is a pretty bold and problematic statement because in order for it to be true, the most basic human activity has to accommodate what he's saying, and that's language. The one question we must ask ourselves is this. If these black Hebrews kept their cultural ways and history and laws and influenced the Africans, how did they not keep the Hebrew language? How did the language and the writing not influence the local population? And why aren't there any Hebrew history books in West Africa accounting for these African empires? Take, for example, the Tariq al-Sudan and the Tariq al-Fatash. Both of these books were written in Arabic, which is a language brought over from a people also from the Middle Eastern region who clearly brought over their religion, language, history, and laws, influencing the African population. If the Arabs were able to do it, why weren't the black Hebrews able to keep a simple thing like their language or the Hebrew writing if millions of them migrated to Africa and built empires? and maintain their culture. If what he claims is correct, then the Sonika people of the Ghana Empire had to have been absorbed by the culture and laws of the black Hebrews. If the kings of Ghana were Hebrew Israelites who kept their tradition, why would they give themselves Sonika names instead of Hebrew ones? For example, here's a small list of names from the kings of Ghana that is well documented. King Kayamaga, King Mayan Diabe Sise, King Basi, and King Tunka Manin. The names of these kings don't seem remotely Hebrew or Jewish. In fact, these names are Sunika in origin, Sise being a very popular mandate name. The names of these kings also point to the originators of the Ghana Empire which is obviously African and not black Hebrew Israelite, as Dr. Windsor proclaims. Also, if the black Hebrews kept their laws and written records, as Dr. Rudolph claims, why would the Kumba Songhai scribes not be writing in Hebrew script? What reason would they have to invent a totally new writing system and worship a new god named Ndebi and not Yah? If these black Hebrews influenced the Africans and kept their Hebrew written records and laws, as Dr. Windsor claims, then the supposed black Hebrew kings of Songhai would not be writing in an ancient Songhai script. When comparing African history with the most celebrated Hebrew Israelite commentary on black Hebrew Israelite history, we run into some serious issues. However, even with these historical issues, the Hebrew Israelites to their credit, make convincing arguments from the Hebrew Bible itself as parallels between the children of Israel of the Bible and the Atlantic slave trade are bound to be similar. Well, I'm all out, guys. In part two, I'm going to tackle the strongest biblical evidence black Hebrew Israelites use and compare it to biblical In his book, From Babylon to Timbuktu, I chose his analysis. So one more part. So what I'm showing that there's an argument within the world of academia, even in the world of academia, we see, you know, us arguing with the academia world about this. Hold on. Is this what I was looking at? Let's see if this... my last video about the history of ins let me make settled sure. among the most civilized. Okay. In between West Africa, the Hongo Soninka of the Ghana is that you can't simultaneously proclaim that the black Hebrews maintain their culture, laws. Okay. There's it's one more. bound to the works in Egypt. Right. But there's one more piece I want to show y'all. And then I think that's it. Where is it at? Okay. 
That's one more piece. So what I wanted to do is show that there are, um, there's facts. So, oh, okay, I got to, I see it now. I got to type it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. So, let me get to it. There it go. All right, I got it, y'all. All right, so as I was saying, I showed that to show that there's arguments. You know what I'm saying? It's arguments proven. You know, some people say we're not Israel. You know, there's not Israel. they're not Israelites. They are Israelites, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. This is the last part. I found it. Let's get it, y'all. So that's for you, Jose. Bear. The true story of the true Hebrews has never been told. Bantu, Negroes, and Nilonics true Hebrews. Tracing Southern African tribes. By Reverend Morgan Shazemba Sichelu. Key verses. Deuteronomy 28, 15-68 and Leviticus 26, 14-39. Disobedience slash consequences. We begin by saying that the Hebrews disobeyed God to just cut the whole story short, because we have so many things to talk about. When you read the scriptures, it will show you what God said was going to happen to the Hebrews as the consequences of their disobedience to the instructions of God. The word of God was fulfilled against them. By 722 BC, the northern kingdom of Israel was conquered by Assyrian and all the ten tribes of Israel were taken to captivity, but others escaped and most of them came to Africa. 2 Kings 17 only Judah and Benjamin in the southern kingdom remained. Mm. Judah also sent and was captured together with Benjamin by Babylon in 580 BC to King 24 and 25. During this capture, verse 26 of chapter 25 shows us that a great number of Jews came to Africa. We should not forget the ten tribes who ran away years back and have already settled and moving to new places in Africa. The notable ones among the ten tribes are Dan, Gad and Asher. Judah was in captivity for 70 years according to Jeremiah 25, 11-13. Then came back to bring forth the Messiah Jesus Christ. BC 3 AD 33. Again in AD 70, Judah was conquered by the Romans and the temple burned down Matthew 24, 1-2. But before the destruction of the temple and scattering of Judah again, the Romans and the descendants of Edom or Esau took over the running of the temple and kingship was given to the Edomites. This is the reason why Herod was not a Jew but a mixture between the Romans and the Edomites. They had intermarriages between them. In short, Herod was a descendant of Edom. We have seen that Judah was dispersed from the Promised Land when the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Also when we reflect back in Babylon, we see other members of the ten tribes who became part of Judah. This happened after Assyria was conquered by Babylon. 
the scripture shows us that some of them failed to trace their clans and they were considered the lost tribe of Israel. Ezra 2 to 59, 62. Those who managed to trace their family roots can also be seen in the New Testament of the Bible. A good example is Anna who was from the tribe of Asher Luke 2 to 36. The other example are the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ who came from the 10 tribes except Judas Iscariot who was the only one from the tribe of Judah. This picture we are seeing here does not mean that all the clans from the 10 tribes of Israel became part of Judah whilst in Babylon no. Most of them ran away from being captured by Assyria first and then Babylon second. For example, Jeremiah did not go into captivity in Babylon, but went to Egypt and many others. Jeremiah 29 to 1, 43, 1 44 to 12. What we have just stated briefly is the consequences of disobedience according to what God told them in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and what Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24 to 1. Now that they are scattered in all the four corners of this world, how can we know and identify the true Hebrews Israelites of the Bible? This question will take us back to the Old Testament of the Bible. Elliot Smith, ethnologist, states that, the Hamites and the Semitic people were virtually indistinguishable. It is important to look at Hamites and Semitic people because this is where the Bantu Negroes and Nilotic people came from. Ham and Shem were black people and we shall see how the intermarried between them occurred throughout the Bible and not any other races. We shall look at their movements according to the Bible. According to Deuteronomy 28, one of the key signs of knowing the true identity of the real Israelites is slavery. Verse 46 puts it very clear that he shall be upon you for a sign therefore, Africa stands as a better place to trace the true Israelites since slavery was one of the activities which was taking place. Many people were sold as slaves to all corners of this world. This matter should draw the attention of all theologians, historian, anthropologists to research more on African tribes. When you look at the whole passage of Deuteronomy, it will give every reader a picture of Africa where such curses are part of its people. About 80, Africans crossed the sea in chains in the 8th century. Other key facts on the identity of Israel. Rob Simon Altaf states, On fall for the typical argument of a Jewish Cohen blood DNA test, it proves nothing this is only a distraction and smoke screen which does not prove anything. The real Hebrews test is your ancestry where you originated from Africa such as Ghana, Niger, Sudan, Nigeria, Chad, South Africa, Congo and some other countries there which likely prove a true Hebrew. If you were in Iraq, Afghanistan, Parkston, India enslaved in Europe, Caribbean islands, America, Brazil and Portugal then you were likely a true Israelite. We agree with Smith who started that the Hamites and Semitic were same in appearance of color. It was difficult to distinguish between the two. Simon also commented that blood DNA test cannot tell the real black Israelites. In our understanding, it is so, because the two people Hamites Ham and Semitic Shem people had intermarriages between them as earlier stated. No any other race was involved in any marriage arrangements throughout the Bible, except for Ham and Shem descendants. Today, we can rightly say, they are almost one people. The name Ham the youngest son of Noah means burned, hot, black and brown. Shem means who a person is egg, name or fame. Shem in English is the same as name. The Shem of God is Yahweh. A good Shem is better than money. A good name is better than money. The meaning of Japheth the oldest son of Noah is. 
enlargement. May he expand. May he give ample room. When we first look at Judah, Yehuda means praise or honorable the fourth son of Jacob, married Canaanite women from Ham. All his descendants followed the same way. Even his mother Leah was a black Canaanite woman. Gen 10 to 6, Gen 38 to 6. Her name means tired cow. Actually, many Bible commentator describes Leah to be very ugly. In this case, all those claiming to be of tribe of Judah Yehuda should or must now acknowledge their Canaanite roots of black people through Ham, or be plainly seen as imposters planted by a certain race to cheat to the rest of the world that they are true identity of a real Hebrew Simon Altaf. The name Judah came after the Canaanite city called Jehud Joshua 19-45. A mixture of Israel and Canaan continues. Judges 3, 5 6 says that Israel. So you got to stop. So we already know that the true Shemites were black and so were the Hamites. And a lot of our Hebrew brothers were mixing with Canaanite women. So we know for a fact that so called ancient watchmen, you are not these people. You have no, you have no look. As if it's a combination of Shem and Ham. Y'all don't, meaning, you know, Shemitic fathers and Hamitic mothers. This is what you're seeing. But this this is not the so-called ancient watchmen. Look. Canaanite. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their might ones. This kind of mixture can make the two become one and since they were all black. See? Who are the Canaanites? The Canaanite came from the first son of Ham and these are Sidon, Hittite, Jebusi, Amori, Girgash, Havi, Ark, Sin, Arvad, Zimari, Hamadi. Their location is as follows. Sidon helped to build the Temple of Solomon, 1 Kings 5 to 6. Shalom, shalom. Now I have to go to work, y'all. I will be back with part two tomorrow. Because I work swing shift. So we will get back tomorrow to continue this bombing. But before I go, I just want y'all to see the face one more time. Okay. One more time. You know what I mean? Because I didn't even get to the, to this yet. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get in all of that. You know what I'm saying? But um, getting back here, I want y'all to remember this face. That's what I want y'all to remember. This is the man right here who believes is Jesus Christ. They didn't believe they were Israelites who who Jose Vera keep bringing up, bringing up this crazy cult to justify that they Israel when they not. OK, it's so much evidence shrouding. Then I showed the second video to show both sides from the academia world and our world where you have some in the academia world saying we are Israel. Then you have others saying that we not. You know what I'm saying? Then I show briefly how you got people in amongst the Bantu saying that they're the Israelites. As a matter of fact, they saying that they are um, the northern kingdom and remnants of the southern kingdom. So let me see if I want to show anything else before I go. Nope. But that's who y'all follow. This who y'all follow. Y'all thought to bring up this who y'all follow. I want y'all see who y'all. That's who y'all follow. Y'all following is weirdo. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all. Like once I get into the information, I was going to bring this information out. You know what I'm saying? No, this day page. Look, y'all, this day page right here. 
so y'all can see. According to the Holy Scriptures, testify after the death of our Lord Jesus Christ is no longer achieved through the law, but through grace. This is them. This is what they believe, man. These is Christians that's just wearing costumes. So y'all really thought that these people believe like they were Israel and all that. Y'all went for that. Now look. Now look at y'all. I'm on a I'm on a Facebook page. This is them. Let's listen to how they sing and how they sound. Look. Oh. This is them. This is who they follow. Oh. See that? This is who they follow. And why they all look like they're Christians. They're Christians. Period. <laughs> These guys is Christians, man. Y'all thought like y'all was going to fool people because y'all had on suits and all that. Nah. It don't go down like that, man. So, this is them right here, y'all. So, anytime y'all want to deal with that, y'all look them up. As y'all can see, there you go right there. You know what I'm saying? He's the founder. That was him when he was old, when he died. This is these guys, man. You know what I'm saying? These guys, man, ain't who you think they are. They don't believe he hit it go right here. So y'all can see it. These is all I'm trying to look like Jesus Christ. So-called Jesus Christ. Look. Look, that's them. They not what people think. These people are not like Israelites. They're Christians. And all this shit was geopolitical. To get this dude in a, to be a part of a geopolitical um, Maoist party, man, that he was trying to develop. But all these guys is Christians, man. Look. Look, these is Christians, man. If you if you dig it, wear their cords of blue. These guys is just dressing up, man. That's all they doing is dressing up. That's it. But this is them. That's them. So you can see. Y'all thought, damn, you know, English. Put that in English. Yeah. The Peruvian, the, this Peruvian religious group is currently in Spain. Look, they talk about that this Peruvian religious group is currently in Spain in the case of a of the kidnapping of a girl with whom her abductor will have married. You know what I'm saying? They talk about how they be going through a whole bunch of, listen, man. Look. Look, I'm tearing the asses up. I'm tearing them, this group, to which the kidnapper of a girl resident in Spain, hell in Bolivia, belonged to, you know what I mean, to this Peruvian say. Look, they caught up in a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, scandalous shit. You know what I mean? But y'all kicking it like they was some real Israelites and they weren't. They have nothing to do with that. Y'all you know I mean? So these people, the Evangelistic Association of the Israelite Movement and the New Universal Pact is a Peruvian national set which has a curious doctrinal sequencism in which Christian and Catholic elements are mixed with belief of the ancient Incas, especially highlighting um, things from the Old Testament such as it can already be seen in the same name, Israelite mission and new covenant, referring to the alliance, right? And they affirm that it's purely a Peruvian set. Of course, it is not an evangelistic church, nor is it recognized by evangelistic Christians. It says that the founder, um, it 
It says it is a set founded in 1955 by Ezekiel. This dude, he was a shoemaker, you know, and who after his discovery of the Bible felt himself chosen by God. He affirms that with the historical novelty that the Roman Emperor Constantine supposed in his treatment of the church, you know what I'm saying, it would be. Uh, have betrayed the divine mission that it had in the world and that the history of salvation would have been recovered in 1955 uh, where God whom they call Jehovah revealed Ezekiel his new designs to restore his covenant with humanity that is why he found the group which was legalized in Peru in 1969 you know what I mean? These guys ain't even real, you know, Israelites and nothing. They, they, this is their belief. If you notice, I'm showing you sources upon sources, which showing what I'm saying is true, but I got to go. Um, last part, you know, they, they say before going over his doctoral foundation, let's see, let us see an example of secret, um, secret chrisms and force adaptations of its beliefs, the customs of leaving your hair long in the ancient city where they're talking about to the Nazarite vow that appears in the Bible, the book of Leviticus, and the sacrifices offered by the Incas to the gods would be those prescribed by the Old Testament, and on and on and on and on and on, right? But let's get to what they acknowledge about the bull. Now, listen, right? So, you know, they believe that he was Jesus. They believe, you know, after they would affirm that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that the Holy Spirit was incarnating in Ezekiel, whom they call Christ in the West. They call him my Lord, showing him respect and fear. They prophesied that he would die, crucify after preaching 1,260 days like Jesus, and that after remaining three days dead, exposed in public, he would raise again and receive the Holy Spirit, which did not happen, by the way. Yeah, this man died of a heart attack in 2000. Like, everything, it, it, every every website is confirming everything that we're saying. So I'm out of here, y'all. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? It goes on and on, but I got to go. May y'all be with the family. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't dealing with this power here, you ain't dealing with no power. This the mighty Hebrew. I like all y'all. Hebrew is like Soviet nationalism rising worldwide.